And then this happened. Byron Allen. I didn't even realize he, he's been the man all these years. You know what I'm saying? Appeals court rejects charter Comcast motion to dismiss Byron Allen's multi-billion dollar civil rights suit. <clears throat> it's the update by Don C. Shmilowski. All right. So Byron Allen started his career out as a comedian. Comedian. Mother been an Illuminati his whole life. And uh, he grew up on on uh, the NBC set. That was his little playground. You know what I mean? You knew all the big wigs, Johnny Carson and them boys personally. And, uh, you know, he watched how like nine different shows was filmed in the NBC set every day. And, you know, so he grew up in the business. He learned un under the best of the best, some Italian guy, I forget his name, he'll tell you. All you have to do is go to uh, Black Enterprise channel and see the interview for yourself. So now it was updated, 5, 12 p.m. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals today rejected Comcast and Charter's motion to dismiss Byron Allen's multi-billion dollar civil rights lawsuit against them read the filing here and details of the case below see that's what you need to do you need to go to this uh article on deadline and then click these things because i'm not gonna do it because i already got it downloaded on my phone and it's uh, about 26 pages so this is just, you know, learning is boring. So uh, that's how that works. Here's a statement Allen released after the ruling. Comcast and Charter were wrong by pursuing a legal defense that the First Amendment allows them to discriminate. So that's, that's a, a common thing that happens nowadays because the fashion industry is uh very much allowed to discriminate fashion industry and uh, the model the model industry is they are uh legally protected to discriminate uh it's just like an uh hiring an actor you know you wrote a character for a particular part and the character is uh has a particular look that you need and a particular persona that you need and some actors can uh assume that persona by acting but uh so a lot of actors can't so they have to find somebody who is cl generally uh naturally from that perspective like for example you got uh uh like say uh 50 cent the boss right 50 cent uh probably couldn't play a dolly parton for example so uh they would have to find a white woman preferably you know they could dye her hair blonde or she have naturally blonde hair and and uh they can fix her up to look like dolly parton <clears throat> but that'd be very difficult to do with 50 cents so Discrimination is legal in certain areas, but in, in the communications business and energy and, and uh, finance, you are not allowed to discriminate. So they hide their discrimination in other ways by calling us feeble minded and, and uh, crafting the laws around uh, how we do things, how we look like, for example, the hair uh, fiasco that was just recently banned in California. So you can no longer discriminate against uh, a, a woman's natural hair. So women no longer have to press their hair and damage their hair and, and put wigs on and put, uh, put weave in in order to get a, a living wage job. You see what I'm saying? 
So these are recent changes in the law as the maturity of the uh, society matures. You know what I'm saying? So, the, so society matures very slowly because most people reject justice and they reject biblical standards to judge things properly. So <clears throat> they think you're just supposed to assimilate the best you can and become become uh, uh, out of touch with reality at all times in order to function in society. But that's that's not really the case. All you need to do is have a conviction of your particular standards of beauty and you'll thrive. Now, so, okay, now, Alan goes on to say, we are very pleased with the ruling by the Ninth Circuit to uphold their decisions in our favor for a second time. If Comcast and Charter want to pursue the Supreme Court, we are highly confident that the Supreme Court will affirm the Ninth Circuit and support these historic legal decisions. So this, that's kind of what I wanted to harp on right there. Uh, Allen considers this to be a historic legal decision, and this is an old guy now, so he knows how things were back, you know, in the 70s and, and stuff. So, uh, uh, although white men were generally still in supreme power uh, at that time, you know, just a little, actually, they kind of looked like they're in power because they stole everything that we, that we have and we built everything for them and haven't pushed back yet. But Allen has a very different mind frame where he uh, confronts these things head on based on um, some advice that he received from Evander Holyfield. So Evander Holyfield told him uh, when, he's, when he was fighting Mike Tyson, just before he fought Mike Tyson, uh, Allen asked him, how in the world are you going to beat Mike Tyson? He's, he's, a, he's an animal. And uh, Evander Holyfield said, uh, uh, come here, I, I'll show you. So he told his friend to go in front of Evander Holyfield so he could show him, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, Evander said, uh, when people confront a ferocious enemy, they pause, hesitate, and take a step back to where the enemy can unload all of their force and power into a leaping blow and, and knock, knock you off balance. So his, Evander Holyfield's strategy was to press up on uh, bro, on uh, Mike Tyson. It was kind of like when, uh, what's that boy name? Uh, uh, Zab Zuda, his boy, the new, the new, the new hype, the undefeated champ, <clears throat> the new boxer. Uh, uh, you know who I'm talking about. He fought a, 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 a Asian phenom, a young Asian phenom, right? That was, I'm talking about, he was, the, the Asian phenom was destroying everybody in this country. And he was uh, either undefeated or he might have lost one battle his whole life. But he was, he's the absolute best and nobody can really touch him at all. And so uh, Mayweather <clears throat> kept pressing him, kept walking forward and go going into the ferocity of the young man. You see what I'm saying? So that nullified his his power because uh, there was no there was no fear there. So where there, where, where there's a lack of fear, uh, opponents tend to um, lose they lose their focus and balance because they need you to be afraid of them in order for uh, them to function in order for their mind to work at its peak. Uh, speaking of that. What you see all around the country uh, uh, with uh, prostitution and strippers and everything and, and uh, drug dealers and these things and people who kick people doors in and robbers and stuff, these people are demon-possessed. You don't know that because you don't believe in demons. So now 
when there's uh, no fear involved with uh, confronting these people or, or, you know, falling victim to these people, right? Then those demons don't, it's like a video game. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a damn tumbling block. Like when in a video game, if you do this, this happens. There's a, there's a cause and effect. So if you lack fear in the face of a, a demonic entity, which you just think is just a, some crazy guy <clears throat> or on, uh, you know, a guy that that uh, is in need of some help and stuff like that. So you want to tell him you, man, oh, fuck you, or, you know, whatever. However you react, I don't know how you guys react when you get robbed because you probably just, you know, you get robbed. You just get robbed, and that's it. That's the end of it. But for me, uh, when you show these people that you have no fear. The, the the demon that's possessing their body can't harm you. See what I'm saying? So I don't know if that is a, a fact for people who don't trust God or or that's only for people who trust God and have no fear. But I know for a fact that lack of fear uh, basically disables your opponent. See what I'm saying? So you can know that for for debates as well. You can see that even with uh, Q, Kubert, right? He goes into a, a, a debate not uh, unaware of all knowledge, but the information in his debate. So that uh, gives him a particular focus that people can't handle, can't deal with. So he stays super duper cool under pressure. And so when you, he's that cool and, and unafraid and, and is allowed to say anything, uh, it, even if it's uh, misrepresenting the information, he still uh, comes, looks, the optics are, are perfect. So it's, it's hard to, uh, to make him look bad. So that's what you, that's kind of like what you got to do in a intellectual sparring match is you got to kind of like make the opponent's information look bad make him look bad personally and, and all these other things you know it's a whole bunch of stuff you got to do but that's just part of it and and it's impossible to do that with someone who has no fear so people who uh lack all information lack, lack all knowledge they have a that type of aura about them too but people who are highly super intelligent and know quite a bit of information and train themselves to never lie. So, you know, their, their speech, um, is con convicting and it's, it has an air of truth to it because they are dedicated to telling the truth. So they're trying to get everything as accurate as, as they possibly can. Wherein a person who doesn't know anything doesn't care uh, whether it's true or not. And that uh, sh sh reveals as a uh, lack of fear and, and perfect confidence. So people who know the information have to develop uh, that type of aura. They have to uh be so sound in their information that they uh seem confident or are confident in their information see what i'm saying because they have done the research behind it somebody who don't don't care don't know don't want to know and don't want you to know and don't and don't care if you know reality uh they they automatically sound perfectly confident so now, circuit and support these historic legal deci decisions. So now this um, decision that happened in the Ninth Court, Circuit Court, uh, was a $10 billion decision, okay? And it's about land, 
and it's and it's about the 1866 Civil Rights Act. So now you got the 1866 Civil Rights Act that says that a black person is perfectly equal with a white person. So that that uh you know gave us per, uh perfect freedom uh within uh this country um on paper. So now paper is very different from the psyche of a society. So the society to this day has not matured to the level of making us free people. So this is why the the uh the the courts are filled with lawsuits daily because um the society trains and 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 shows with their show with their with their television shows and their movies like all the cop shows and stuff like that that cops are better than uh black people see what i'm saying so uh and and all white people are better than black people so this this society this uh psyche is pervasive in the society and people act out how what they believe they act out what they believe, you know what I'm saying? So they, they treat us like uh, worse than animals. So you see, if a dog would, would die, people would go completely bonkers and um, give the, the owner of the dog, donate $5 million to the owner of the dog that died. But, we're, but we see black people dying constantly, daily. Uh, and... Uh, I just seen a, a, a post that said 480,000 black people got missing in 2018. I don't know how true that is. I, I would have to fact check it. But uh, I know it's a lot of people who go missing every year. So now, this that's generally speaking for the organ harvesting uh, black market. You know what I mean? So now... That's one of my main concerns is is uh, trying to show people to not not tell people you know where their kids go to school and stuff like that and showing them all over the uh, social medias and stuff. But you know nobody really pays attention to that information because it's too it's just too geeky and too unbelievable. All right, Brian Roberts of Comcast and Tom Rutledge of Spectrum Charter have refused my offers to sit down and discuss these very serious matters. Now, that's, okay, so this happened uh, with me as well when, when uh, Spectrum used to be Time Warner. Uh, there was, there was uh, straight, straight busters, assholes, and idiots. And so they tried to extort me out of uh, 700 bucks two different times that I had already paid. And so I uh, uh, did a notice to them uh, to give me a million dollars lest you die. And so it was a professional notice uh, with the with the sovereign, uh, the sovereign jargon. So that's when you pull out the maxims of law and you state the maxims of law, you record each and every conversation with with uh, the people that you spoke with uh, and you also uh, jot down the time that it happened and the result of the conversation and it was about 20 people involved or, or was eight people involved maybe in the chain eight I would say probably about a max of eight people involved in the chain of command because I would keep uh, telling them to send me to your boss because you clearly don't understand what I'm telling you. I've already paid this $700 and I don't owe you $700. I got the receipt right here. I got this over here. You can't refute it. Nope. Well, the computer say 700 bucks. So how are we going to handle this today? You're going to pay cash, check, or charge? I said, nigga, I'm not paying none of, none of nothing. What you're going to do is put me on the phone with your boss. So every time they put me on the phone, their boss and went went up the chain until uh, they finally uh, ignored everything. So I sent in a letter 
uh, with the same type of jargon uh, taught taught by uh, ta, ta, what's his name Taj Tariq Bay. Uh, he tell you how exactly how to craft your letters to these companies that that be trying to extort money from you. So I sent in a letter. Okay, to them to Time, time Warner. And uh, after about three months, you got to do it. It's a particular process that you have to do. And so I did the whole process. And after about three months, they zeroed out the, the $700. So I no longer owed the $700. That was the first time. Okay. I zeroed it out. I got a receipt and a confirmation number and all that. So then a few months later, after the offering me the... Uh, the uh, the the uh service again about a month uh, after that the seven hundred dollars popped back up in their system so somebody didn't delete it out of their system some kind of way so i showed them the confirmation number the receipt and i told them who i spoke to and the, and the letter that i sent out and all this stuff and they didn't believe me so they went crazy so that's when I kept telling them, oh, let me talk to you, boss. I can't talk to you too irate. Kept going to their boss, and, and they basically ignored the the evidence that I was providing to them. So then I wrote one of those letters again. Instead, I didn't write it to the company. I uh, filed it with the county. I put, I put a lien on the um, frequencies of Time Warner, all their vans in, in, in this city, their building, and all of their equipment in this city. And then I told them they owe me a million dollars. All right, so I put all the proper um, technique that you're supposed to put into the notice and then I filed it uh with the county. So my county uh what's his name? Uh the county uh clerk of clerk of clerk of courts. Register of deeds, register of deeds. The county register of deeds, the register of deeds is a good friend of my, my grandmother. So uh for some odd reason he did not want to uh place that on public record so now i understood I, I didn't fight you know you're not when you do these processes you're not supposed you're supposed to present yourself friendly so i didn't argue with him he said to give it to the county attorney instead of putting in the public view put it in in the private view so i fully understood what he was telling me to do there so now I gave it to the the uh uh what you call that the attorney the county attorney and then they did what they did with it and Spectrum I mean Time Warner went out of business so that's how that's how you get things done around here see what I'm saying so now they're Spectrum and this this brother right here Byron Allen just I'm, I'm talking about completely destroyed them now listen to to what happened with with his situation now we have no choice but to enter the discovery phase to depose all of their executives depose okay that's a, a legal you will know you'll find out you just look it up depose all of their executives and business associates. So they have to come in there together and figure out uh, why they lie. As well as receive all of their correspondence and contracts to prove our cases in front of a jury. So now he, this is uh, kind of pre preliminary to the, uh, to the Supreme Court situation. So the Supreme Court decided or elected to... Um, say okay comcast no problem we'll hear your case because comcast wants to discriminate and comcast is accusing byron allen of 
uh, undermining their First Amendment right to discriminate. So, uh, the Supreme Court is about to hear that case in November. I think it's November 19th or something like that. You see what I'm saying? So, but nobody's talking about this because, I mean, I just seen a video the other day that was that came out in 2000, 2016 where he did another $10 billion suit back in the day with a whole nother company and it was on CNN on YouTube who got over 7 million subscribers and the video only had 30,000 views. Now you tell me how that's possible. It's not possible. So uh, that's how they treat us. They, they, this is why these brilliant black people that we got in, in the only league in the country uh, can't get the information out anywhere because the uh, the the uh, media is very heavily controlled and they suppress uh, anything that deals with with our ownership of things. See what I'm saying? So now, every American elected official, civil rights organization, and the Department of Justice should be offended that the largest cable companies in the United States pursued a legal defense that the First Amendment allowed them to discriminate against any American. <laughs> yeah, that, they should be. Comcast and charters, shareholders, and board members should find this immoral, unacceptable, and be concerned that these companies will be held fully accountable because this has officially become a very serious business. We will continue to win these cases because we are on the right side of history. As the Bible has taught us, what is done in the dark will come to the light. Ha! Ain't that all uh, fitting? Ha ha ha! <laughs> Byron Allen, the new uh, black J.P. Morgan of our day, <laughs> quoted the Bible. Wow. Anyway, it's what you guys are done for. You know, real things happen in, in, in real life. And you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so a federal appeals court cleared the way for Byron Allen's Entertainment Studios networks to pursue civil rights suits against two of the nation's biggest cable operators, Charter Communications and Comcast. These lawsuits seek sizable damages, $20 billion against Comcast and $10 billion against Charter for alleged violations of the Civil Rights Act. Okay, of uh, 1866. So now, uh, what I'm trying to tell you here is that he won in the Ninth Circuit and the Supreme Court agreed to hear the cause uh, in November. I think it's November 19th. So nobody's talking about this because, you know, uh, the Black Illuminati are pr pretty silly. They, they don't, they, they, they're not uh, into your liberation at all and they want you to uh stay uh completely broke and um you know just you know do what you do all right uh i think that's all i really wanted to get at was this information is important and an official stance needs to be uh documented all right peace